Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video, we're going to look at the jQuery change event handler. Now, in previous parts of the tutorial set, we've looked at using the uh, click event handler, for example. However, if we have elements on a page such as a drop down list, you'll want to use the change event handler to actually allow uh, this event to take place or the function inside of this event to take place when a new value has been selected for example. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and build a uh, drop down list. So I'm going to use the select element and I'm going to give this an ID of list. Now inside of here I want to choose uh, some options that will be displayed in the list and uh, I'm going to give each of them a value. So the first value is going to be 1, and I'll just write 1 in here, which is the text displayed to the user. This is the value that's returned. I'll then go ahead and just copy and paste this down and change these values. So we've got 1, 2, and 3, and we'll just change these accordingly. So let's go over to our page and refresh. You can see we've now got a drop-down box with 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so what we want to do now is create a page, uh, a JavaScript page that we can include that's going to include the event handler for when this list changes, i.e. when someone clicks the drop-down list and then selects a new value. So when they, whenever they click on a new value here, that's classed as the element changing. So let's go ahead and create our new file. I'm going to place this inside my jQuery uh, folder with jQuery.js and I'm going to call this change.js. Okay, so now I'm going to need to include this change.js file on my page. So I'm going to say script type is equal to text forward slash JavaScript. The source is going to be js forward slash change.js and then I'll end the script there. Okay, so now that we've done that, we should have functionality from this change.js file and we can uh, create an event handler for when this list changes. So we're also going to go down here and create a span and that's going to be um, the feedback from what's been selected. So I'm going to call this list feedback. So inside this span, we're going to create some text that lets the user know um, what they've selected from the list. Now, this uh, isn't just useful for relaying what the user selected. Obviously, the user knows what they've selected. But let's say you wanted to show another drop-down list when a user had selected a particular element in here or a particular option from this list. We can do that as well. We're not going to be looking in this tutorial because I'm just demonstrating the event handler. However, it is a possibility and you will, uh, you will see the methods that you can use to create this uh, for yourself. So for now, we're just displaying uh, the feedback from the user. So let's go ahead and reference the list. That would be hash list. Now we need to create the event handler. And this is change. So it's the dollar sign inside brackets. We uh, textually represent the, or refer to this list using a hash. Then we say dot change. And we have parentheses here and then a semicolon. Inside of here, we need to create a function with our block, which will then pull down and we can start writing our code in here. Now let's go ahead and uh, just alert something out and that's going to be changed. Now what's gonna happen is when we actually change the list option, so when we choose a different option in the list, we'll get an alert box to show uh, that this has worked. Uh, it's important that we test that it has worked before we continue with the rest of our code. So I'm clicking on this, but nothing's happening. However, when I select a different option from the list, you'll see that we get this alert box saying changed as we specified. So now that we know it works, we can actually retrieve the value from here and then uh, relay it to the user. So I'm going to create a new var called list value, and that's going to be equal to, again, we're referencing list up here. So we do exactly the same thing, hash list and then dot val, which we've spoken about in some of the other parts of the tutorial. This here is going to retrieve the value here. Okay, so for each element or for each option. Okay, so now that we've got this list value, we can then go ahead and actually relay this to the user. So inside of, um, and well, by referencing another element, which is list feedback, 
we can say dot HTML and then we can insert the list value so now when we've uh, well when jQuery has picked up on this change we grab the current value and then we relay it back to the user using the HTML function which will just put some uh, a value inside this list feedback span okay so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and test this uh, in fact beforehand I think we'll just add some more um, text to here so you've well, you have selected there we are so you have selected a space and appending on the list value okay let's put a colon in there okay so now let's go ahead and test this so I'm going to choose two and it says you have selected two now I'm going to choose three you have selected three and then one you have selected one so you can see with this uh, change event handler we can extremely easily check for the change of different elements now this doesn't have to just be used for lists it can be used for um, a variety of elements input fields text areas um, you know as many elements as you can think that would, would that would uh, have some use in this uh, event handler so it's not just limited to this select uh, option uh, element or the select option uh, sorry the select element uh, it can be applied to a variety of other elements as well